Hello everyone and welcome to the Gumpla Network. I'm the Spicer and today we'll be unboxing the HGUC RGZ95C Rizel Commander type. This unboxing comes to you courtesy of those wonderful folks over at Canadian Gundam, your go-to in North America for Gumpla and Plamo. With flat rate shipping in North America and a private warehouse option, they've got you covered on most every front. When you're placing your order, think back to this moment and remember our promo code for 10% off is Gunpla Network. Before we get into what makes this kit up in terms of plastic, we need to see where it comes from. The box itself sports a wonderful piece of art reflecting combat against the NZ666 Cassatria that would take place in the early part of Gundam Unicorn's OVAs or eventual television series. This would be one of three types of this mobile suit to be shown as part of the SCVA-76 Nail Argama's mobile suit complement in the series. We also see the Unicorn Gundam logo, or the series logo, the mobile suit's name and designation, as well as that nice blue Bandai logo, which of course emits the yen price, shout out to Reishiki for letting me in on that little jewel of information. The shorter sides sport similar box art, and the longer sides of the side of the box will feature the gimmicks of the kit, such as the parts formation, the main weapon, the mega beam launcher, and on the other side we have some background on the suit as well. And what a background it is as it spans back to the time when a teenager could punch a military officer and still a Gundam and still be the hero. The mid 0080s and the 1980s brought us the Zeta series of mobile suits, or the Zeta Project, and the Methus, the grandparents of the Rizel. Now if you've seen any of Zeta Kai's videos here on the Gumpla Network about Zeta era mobile suits, you'll know the Methus is one of the most pivotal mobile suits in mobile suit design in the late UC. In universe it was made by combining the Zeta and the Methus. The Methus with its great Wave Rider mode, then it's made into the Zeta Plus, then the Rigzy, then the Rizel, and let's not forget its connections to the Gun Cannon Detector, making it one of the most important mobile suits in late UC. The Methus is one of the best mobile suit designs of all time as the Methus would feature a simpler transformation that would later be adopted into the Rizel. Well, the Rizel does more closely resemble the Zeta, a lot of the mechanics more closely resemble the Methus. As the shoulder armors have the extra sensors, much like the Methus, the little pokey bit up top on the backpack is very similar to the Methus as well, and lastly, of course, the little hook on the front of the skirt armor, which I don't really know what purpose it serves, but it's there, and it's from the Methus. This is still going to feature a Wave Rider mode, so while it did evolve from the RGZ-91 that we see in Shars Counterattack, it is slightly different and is much closer to its originators, the Zeta and Methus, versus this new backpack weapon system that we saw. Side note, the RGZ-91 also happens to show up in Unicorn very, very, very briefly. And, of course, the Rizal is a fairly popular design as it has two different types of SD designs as well as a mobile suit girl and a slightly different variant of that design as well. But it's been in different areas, plus it has the high grade we're looking at today as well as the standard RGZ95 Rizal, as well as a master grade that both comes in the commander and regular variants. It also even had a fixed figuration version, which of course is kind of non-existent now, but it was a cool line that was a mix of a kind of a statue and somewhat of an action figure. And as for the plastic, we're going to start here with the A-plate, which is going to be mostly blue, but it also has some black, some white, and some curious clear green plastic with a beam saber blade, which is a little strange, but I'm glad it's included. The B-plate is in that entirely same blue, which is largely going to make up the transformation gimmick, but also has the beam sabers and the shield. The C-plate is going to have some more of the internal bits, still all in that blue. Then we've got both of the D1 and D3, curious no D2 plate, both in white, which is actually going to be a big deal for this kit as the color separation is actually going to be really nicely done. We also have the E-plate making up most of the internal frame of both the mobile suit and the transformation gimmick. We also have the F-plate, which is ABS, so it's more of the inner frame and some of the movie bits for like the beam rifle, things like that. 
Then we go back to the kind of teal blue plate here with the G plate for the backpack. Then from there, the H plate is the weapons and more of the backpack portion as far as like where it actually attaches to the mobile suit. We have the PC pieces as you would expect. We have the stickers and quite a few of these metallic green stickers as they're going to be pretty much all over the mobile suit. You'll see some of them in the review, you'll see some of them not on the kit just so you have an idea of where paint might look better or where you feel fine with stickers being. We also have a nice little decal sheet here with Londo Bell numbers, EFSF, and uh, some numbers. And of course, lastly, the beam sabers and the actual manual itself. In a beautiful manual, it is very traditional HGUC. My expectations for this kit are gonna kind of vary a little bit here, you know. The HGUC line's not always known for its um, advancements in uh, technology. I mean, we've been getting the same unicorn for how many years now with very little update. The Rizel, however, does look like it's going to have some interesting articulation, mostly looking kind of around the shoulders and into the elbows. The rounded parts on that kind of stand out as the rest of them are kind of more angular and sharp, so I'm interested to see how that plays together. As far as all the stickers and stuff, most all of them are going to go on a sensor of some sort, so I think that's really okay. Most everything from the plastic looks like it's going to fit fairly well, so I'm not too concerned about it. We'll see once we build it, of course, but I think that's kind of part of the look, and I think it's really going to play into what makes the Rizel so cool looking. Cutler separation looks honestly pretty good. There's a few places that might be a little off, you know, the traditional stuff, the little yellow V on the front skirt armor. Um, and I think the only thing else I noticed was that the beam rifle doesn't have like the white tubing and I didn't see a sticker for it, but honestly that would be easy enough to go back with paint or just leave it the way it is because it doesn't look that bad and it's not that noticeable. I am kind of genuinely curious but kind of excited to see where that extra beam saber, the green one, goes. Um, we have the two regular pink ones. I'm not sure if it's a novel versus the OVA and series version difference or if that's supposed to go somewhere else. As far as from what I remember in the animation, none of the Rizal Commander type's weapons emitted a green beam, so I'm not really sure. And really, green beams aren't from what I remember in Unicorn, that prevalent other than I think the Kasatria, so that's a little weird, but I'm interested to see if it's just the novel versus the OVA or if it actually has a place. I'm thinking maybe the Mega Particle Cannon or maybe the Beam Rifle on the Shield might have that capability, you know, the Zeta Era stuff. You could use the big beam gun as a beam saber if you needed to, so it will be interesting to see if that is the case here. Um, outside of that, I'm really excited to see all the white in those two different plates. That is a huge thing because painting white is kind of a nightmare. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not fun either. So I'm glad that we see most, I think, all the entire kit other than once again that tubing on the main beam, ri beam rifle is going to be good. So very excited for that. The Rizel has always been a favorite of mine ever since Unicorn really, really pushed me back into Gundam. I mean. Seed got me back in, but Unicorn was the moment I was like, hey, this is crazy. I mean, this is like the, one of the most cinematic things I've ever seen, and it is going to hold that special place in my heart, so I'm really hoping that Zell doesn't let me down. I built Delta Plus as one of my first kits, and as a, a HGUC kit, it wasn't really that great. It's not terrible, but... It's something, especially now with what I've built, I'm a little concerned about that. I don't want this build to not live up to those expectations, but fingers crossed everything goes well, and we'll see in the review. So stay tuned, be sure to check that out. This has been the Spicer, this has been the Gunplay Network, and of course, keep on building.